heard uh, during the inaugural address, different countries are collaborating together, not only bilaterally with India, but also with each other. And uh, I guess one of the good practice examples we saw was uh, Nordic innovation. And uh, in fact, when we did uh, Smart Republic 2018 last year, we had the privilege of uh, having a round table done with the uh, Smart City Commissioners, which was addressed by His Excellency Mr. Niels, who's the ambassador of Norway. Uh, he is uh, with us again uh, this year. I would like to invite the Honorable Ambassador to address uh, the session. For us, we have more than 90% of our population lives in, in cities. In India, it's still around 50%. We have, for having these cities to be livable, good places to live, there are a number of areas which we have to address and have good solutions for it transportation and communication, use of energy and water, waste management, security, wel welfare services, and not least, planning the decision processes, which basically is very much the key to how successful we are in developing our uh, cities in a good way. When we signed this MOU with India, it, the focus was on finding uh, a way of dealing, reducing this challenge. We will support local governments in implementing sustainable waste management practices, establish solid systems for collecting and analyzing information about sources and scope of marine pollution, support beach cleanup efforts and awareness raising campaigns, and launch a pilot project using plastic waste as fuel substitution for coal in cement production and developing deposit uh, schemes. And the whole background for this is, of course, that the circular economy, which is a key to sustainable uh, management of the cities, thermal hydrolysis technique, for instance, from Norway, is leading the way in large metro cities such as Beijing, London, and Washington, D.C and provides very good solutions for Indian conditions. Similarly, we have technologies of great relevance for India. For instance, wastewater treatment onshore on vessels, desalination plants, biofiltration, vacuum suspicion systems, and sludge management. In India, when it comes to our solutions, is green transportation. As most, of, many of you will know, Norway has the highest share of uh, non-emission cars in the world. Last year, 50% of the cars sold in Norway were either electrical or hybrid cars. I think focusing on the smart cities is certainly very important for the development of the, of the Indian, Indian society and also the quality of life for the many, and particularly in a situation where the, the place in the world where the biggest urbanization over the next 30, 40 years will take place namely in India, you really need to apply smart, sensible solutions. And we think that we can be a very valuable partner together with our, all the Nordic countries in this endeavor. Thank you. Our organization is a very old organization. It was established in 1926. And it has been working to support the urban local bodies in India by way of capacity building and giving consultancy to them. We have 50 centers across India, and we are working towards strengthening and reinforcing urban local government and education. We conduct education research in this area, and capacity building is our port. And our capacity building initiatives for training higher officials in all types of urban topics uh, we have been working extensively with all the stakeholders to address urban issues. We are facing challenges like climate change, crime and poverty, disease, and exhaustion of natural resources, which need to be tackled by municipalities and city planners. Since the last few years, ALSG has been providing technical support to various smart cities and state governments on a number of such related issues. We have also been organizing urban dialogue <clears throat> which brings together academicians, 
policy makers, urban planners, business leaders, representatives of civil society organizations and other intelligentsia from urban sector to find sustainable, sustainable solutions for the problems cities are facing. Uh, we have joined hands with World Bank to study the need-based assessment for smart cities programs. Uh, under Smart City Mission, many Indian cities are leveraging digital platforms and industry uh, for uh, technologies in various projects, such as integrated command and control centers for traffic, small, smart traffic management, GPS-enabled waste management, CCTV surveillance in public places, uh, electronic toilets, etc. The World Bank and our institute are partnering to carry out a training needs assessment study and develop a capacity building framework by mapping the needs of smart city leaders with the knowledge and training providers from across the world. To conclude, I would take this opportunity to thank the World Bank and the partner organization for this wonderful platform. I wish all success to this conference and thank you all. I'm very pleased to be here today to speak to you about Australia's urban growth trajectory and its capability in paving the way for other emerging economies like India in moving forward in its process of urbanization. Australia has made use of innovation, technology, and practical ways in dealing with its own rapidly urbanizing population. There are some learnings from Australia that I'd like to share with you in this forum today. It's reasonable to say that there is very strong Australian interest in India's smart city program. 90% of the Australian population lives in 0.23% of its land. 85% of the population lives um, within 50 kilometers of the coast. And 40% of the population lives in the cities of Sydney and Melbourne. So you can understand that we have our own share of uh, challenges due to um, urbanization. So Australia has experienced its own um, rural to urban shift, as well as significant international immigration and investment which has driven the development of a sizable and vibrant building and construction sector, such as quick build housing systems, methods to build high rise towers more efficiently, and design innovations that make buildings more functional. The real challenge between, uh, before the government of India is to build inclusive smart cities for all residents, regardless of whether they are rich or poor. In many respects, the hard-won experience that Australia has been through in urban development and design over the past four decades is now ripe for application in an Indian city context. But these experiences should be valuable as learnings for India's city development. But of course, the scale is different, but the Australian councils and, and municipalities would also be a good source to see how city officials are managing planning issues around high intensity development, environmental management, and ensuring that communities can mix, manage a mix of different uses such as commercial, residential, and industrial. So what's the takeaway here for you from an Australian perspective? Australian expertise is available in key areas of India's smart city programs like urban design development, architectural services, master planning, and transit-oriented development. In Conclusion, India's uh, smart city program implementation is complex, and I believe Australian firms and research organizations have the technical and professional capability which can bring about effective solutions for consortia seeking to access smart city opportunities in India. I don't know how many of you know what the UN Global Compact is, but briefly just to explain that we're basically the private sector arm of the United Nations. Uh, we're the largest corporate sustainability initiative in the world with over 10,000 global signatories. The UN Global Compact commits its corporate signatories to abide by principles across four key pillars of human rights, environment, anti-corruption, and labor. In India, Global Compact Network works with over 350 companies and partners in driving more transparency and governance and response to climate change. Smart Cities is increasingly at the heart of these core pillars, including in the work of Global Compact Network India. First, I want to talk about really where Smart Cities intersects in two revolutions that are happening now. 
First is urbanization. Today, more than half the people on the planet live in cities. Urbanization has far-reaching consequences for humanity, economically, socially, environmentally. Our cities, the urban form, the shape, how we build, plan our cities can hold the key to some of our greatest challenges and help us all reach the sustainable development goals, whether it's climate change, inequality. Second revolution is the explosion of technology and data. Technology can be a core driver in helping cities to achieve their potential of achieving the sustainable development goals, socially, environmentally, economically. India is at the center of both revolutions. It might sound strange coming from someone who just admitted that this is her first time in India, but I've had quite experience in the past 48 hours and I've had the pleasure to interact with quite a number of people to understand that that really is the case. Mega cities like New Delhi will define the future urban landscape. By 2030, India will host seven of the world's megacities. India is also a breakout country for technology use, already outpacing its regional neighbors and far outpacing European and North American countries. So with all of this in mind, what does it mean to be a smart city? There's no universally accepted definition of a smart city. I think we all agree on that. It means different things to different people and to different cities, even to people and cities from the same region and country, coming from the Indi India Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Clean water, sanitation, transport, affordable housing, pollution, skills gaps, youth unemployment, gender inequality, and so on. These are all common challenges where smart cities and the experiences of Indian cities so far can offer common solutions, or at least transferable solutions. Last year, the UN Global Compact Cities Program launched a global call for cities and businesses to come together to accelerate the local level delivery of the SDGs. Over 100 expressions of interest were received from cities and other business partners around the world, including nine cities in India. Smart cities emerged as a key theme, unsurprisingly, from all cities in India, but many others around the world that applied to join our program. Thank you very much. While we are discussing reshaping the future of our cities, we must remember that the future of our cities will be defined by cities and by citizens. And therefore, we are discussing our own future. I feel the SDGs, if it has to be achieved, they have to be achieved at a city level. And we did talk about a you know, number of initiatives, sustainable cities, we talked about resilient cities, we talked about inclusive cities, we talked about compact cities, lighthouse cities, low carbon cities, these are all big words we talked about. But what does citizen want? Citizen wants small intervention, and he's happy with that small intervention, or whatever way you bring it. A key ingredient to this recipe to achieve this sustainable, inclusive, resilient is technology, a digital technology. And I think, you know, we all talk about smartphones, smart sensors, internet of things, cloud-based services, artificial intelligence, blockchain, open data, big data, all these words are becoming a common terminology which were not heard a few years back. And they are really impacting our day-to-day -day lives. And uh, we have already started witnessing the disruptions these technologies are bringing and influencing and strengthening our responses to the, address the challenges of cities. However, I particularly feel the smartness is not what interfaces these technologies are bringing in improving the productivity and competitiveness. But the smartness is how they are contributing towards the leave no one behind agenda, which we all have agreed in 2015 SDG goals. And uh, it's very nice to say integration, collaboration, and participation. But how these ambitious objectives has to be achieved raises complex questions. This will not only require coordinating policies, programs, projects, interagency collaborations, multiple in, at multiple fronts, forming new partnerships, committing significant resources, but also communicating with citizens and involving them in decision making. I am convinced that collective wisdom, we can avoid the prophecy of James Bridle, the book I was reading of New Dark Age, where he has said, uh, that and in technology will end the future, and I will bring that 
Instead of that, with this deliberations today and tomorrow, we'll come pave the way for new age cities rather than the new dark age. And we can present a better cities to our next generation. Thank you very much. Thank you.